we are gonna we're gonna do what we do normally here um, this morning, just real briefly, um, and then we're gonna spend most of our time um, really diving into uh, some interviews with some uh, some incredibly impressive um, agents from our network, guys. Um, uh, we're going to have a, sort of a, a range of conversations, a conversation with a newer agent having incredible success and, uh, and another agent that uh, has, is one of our uh, most probably well-known agents in our network, um, both locally and nationally as well, um, Jesse Dill. Um, so we're, we're going to learn a lot uh, today together um, from our network. But let's um, talk briefly about where we are. Um, we're going to share two graphs with you um, today as, as we head into July. We're going to look at where we are week over week like we do every single um, week. And then we're going to look month over month what's happened um, in our network and, and across our, our, our offices and, and areas that we cover as you look week over week, um, you see that new listings are down in Portland and Lynn County and Corvallis and Albany. Um, and that's largely um, if you were if you were checking hot sheets like I was on on Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday, um, largely uh, there was obviously a, a, a typical slowdown in activity around the holiday weekend. Um, that holiday weekend uh, really seemed to start on Thursday in MLS and, and uh, transferred over on, on Friday. Um, it was interesting for the first time in a long time, I think I went um, uh, almost two days in hot sheets and not seeing a new listing entered. So definitely people were relaxing and, and rightly so over, over this past holiday weekend. Um, you'll notice pendings were, were also down. Pendings were down in, in Portland, in Salem, in Corvallis, Albany market, and in Southern Oregon. Um, and, and that's largely, again, to just the activity level, probably as, as much as anything um, of, of people in, in that holiday week. So we'll, we'll expect to see that uh, pick up considerably this week. And in fact, it already has, if you're in your MLS, um, looking at new listings and new pendings over the last Monday, Tuesday, um, and even this morning, Wednesday, people sort of inputting uh, new pendings and inputting new listings as we head into this week. Um, we continue to pend more homes than we brought to market week over week uh, in almost every single market. In fact, the only market that we actually took new more listings than we actually pended was uh, the Corvallis, um, Albany, right? The Benton County, uh, Benton County uh, market, and and we've seen that um, considerably, which is which is healthy for that market, by the way, right? Uh, new listings are outpacing the new pendings in that market. But every other market, um, our total inventory continues to go down based on the number of homes we pen versus the number of new listings that come to market. So um, that message just continues. When we look month over month, uh, just a few things that jump out at me uh, month over month. Um, let me make sure my screen didn't just change on you. Um, uh, when, when you look at month over month, you'll see that um, that sold properties, right? The number of solds um, dramatically um, changed, right? We just across the board up 59%, 61%, 48%, 38%, 50%. Um, that was just a, a constant um, across the board um, there in, in solds. And you'll notice again, just month over month, um, the other thing that jumped out at me is price changes. As we, as we kind of uh, unpackage um, where the month brought us or, or what numbers we should look at that tell a story, we saw price changes um, down uh, across every single market month over month as well. And that, and that gives us an idea of, of where, um, where the market is trending towards or, or a story to tell our sellers as well um, across the board. We're, we're not seeing a whole lot of adjustment in pricing and, that, and that's largely based on um, Right, motivation of a, of a buyer and a seller. So price changes um, down, um, and then some of those other numbers were mixed when we, when we look at back on markets and pendings and, and bumpables. So um, really just wanted to have that conversation uh, with you. Again, we'll send these out after the call, uh, but good to look at our market week over week as well as month over month. And, and uh, we probably will uh, be about a week, um, about a, about a week from today, we'll see some of those um, real final June numbers come out as well from, from our MLSs. I just wanted to, to, to briefly, I almost forgot um, to put this slide in here, but uh, briefly remind you um, that we have 
Um, and I don't know that I'm supposed to say this, but uh, potentially uh, my favorite, or at least one of my favorite um, speakers um, within our company, um, sharing with our, our network um, exclusively on July 22nd. Um, that may seem far away, but please get that in your calendar from nine to 10. Uh, Gene Rivers is, um, is going to share uh, with our network. I'll, I will share with this group that the, the first, um, the first person that I ever met face to face in our company um, that really um, that really solidified to me that that I had joined a, a company that was was focused on giving back was Gene Rivers. Uh, he came out to Portland, gosh, maybe a decade ago. It was my probably my first second month at the company, and he um, uh, I had the privilege of picking him up from the airport. Uh, we went to dinner, and um, the man is is probably one of the most down to earth. Um, humble, uh, but just incredible business people um, I've ever met. Um, so he is uh, going to talk about our favorite topic, um, which is lead generation. Many of you have met Gene. He's been out to Portland a couple times since then. Uh, but again, um, definitely uh, thank you, Leslie, for setting this up and, and uh, continuing to bring uh, just incredible speakers to our master series um, here virtually as part of our experience network, uh, for sure. So don't want to miss... Um, July 22nd. And Leslie, I'm, I'm not watching chat, but if you can um, make sure that everybody has the link to sign up for that and reserve a spot for that, um, that'll be an important uh, one not to, not to miss. Cool? Yep, Chris, it's right. in there already. So everybody can grab that link off the chat as well as our, our update emails. Awesome. Thank you for that. All right, um, so we're going to jump right in, guys. Um, we're going to spend uh, the majority of our call um, learning from uh, a couple of our agents. And the first agent that um, I want to uh, perhaps um, introduce many of you to for the first time, maybe you have not met um, Edel yet. Um, Edel Lopez, are, are, you, uh, are you on the call? Can you unmute and, and turn on your camera? Hello, yeah, I'm here. Ah, there you are. Um, well, welcome. Thank you so much for um, being willing to spend some some time with us this morning. Um, maybe maybe just to begin, uh, Edel, you can share with us um, just a, a little bit about um, you, uh, a little bit about your background, um, how you how you got into real estate, um, when you got into real estate, and then uh, I'll share some details as well. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, I'm Edel Lopez, and you know I work here at Keller Williams at the Capital City. Um, I started in the real estate business when I was 19. Um, my uncles, I got two uncles that are in real estate as well. And they said, hey, there's a guy that's opening up a mortgage shop and do you want to go work with them? And I was 19, young at the time, but I decided to, you know, try it out. So I did well at that time. And then um, it was during 2008 where we switched over to do loan modifications because, you know, not a lot of people were getting loans back then. The guidelines had changed and everything. So um, I, I started doing loan modifications and then after loan modifications, there wasn't many people that were paying us our fee because they couldn't pay their, their mortgage payment, but we were helping them. And then a lot of them got burned from companies from California. So then, you know, they didn't trust a lot of people either. So then I switched over to um, go back to school for a little bit. So I went to um, Clackamas Community College and Chemeketa for a little bit. And then I started working in the Precious Metals Company. Okay. So I, I, they gave me the opportunity to run that. And that's where I got a lot of experience, I think, um, running a business uh, as they got to help me manage it. Um, and then from there, I got my license. And um, one of my friends that's a real estate agent, too, he told me, hey, you want to go work at Keller Williams? And so that's when I went to Keller Williams. And so I've been there since January 2019, I believe. Okay. And I've been there ever since. Yep. And so, I grew up um, in the Jervis Woodburn area too. So, okay. So Woodburn. Um, so Edel is in our 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 Salem uh, KW office, Capital City. Um, what I think is so impressive, Edel, is um, so so you had some background in real estate, right, on the mortgage side. Um, you spent a, a lot of a lot of that time, not necessarily earning, but learning. 
um, and, and, and honestly uh, helping a, a lot of people through that, um, the last downturn um, in that modification process for their loans and, and earning trust and learning how to communicate. When you got out of the real estate business, um, you and I were talking and, and uh, you had the opportunity to um, really come in, step into a completely different industry. You were in precious metals and you were running someone else's business where, again, you went through this phase of, of maybe not earning, clearly not earning what you're earning today, yeah, yeah. but learning how to run a business. Um, last year, you were uh, Capital Cities Rookie of the Year. And um, just as, as you know, you, you don't talk a whole lot about um, yourself often, you know, but, and I appreciate that humility, but you've closed 29 homes um, year to date, and you have 23 currently in escrow. And um, that is, that is one that's, that's, phenomenally impressive. Um, and, and you were doing that with yourself and your wife, both of you, right? You're a husband and wife team. Um, you're, you're both licensed and it's just you two. And, and you have closed and pended 50, like over 50 homes. So if, if I was to ask you, right, I hear that and say, wow, your ceiling of achievement is ridiculously high, right? Because sure, you've, you've sort of executed some systems, but it's just you too, right? There, there, are, there are some very large teams that, that haven't accomplished what you've, you've accomplished this year in a very interesting year. What are, what are maybe a couple of the keys to your success? What would you say if I asked you that question, like, how do you, how are you even doing that? Um, I think it's, um, you know, when, when the times were, were this pandemic was happening, a lot of people that I was talking to, they were telling me, Hey, you know, you need to, you need to save your money. You need to, um, just, you know, not advertise as much. You need to, um, you know, get prepared. We don't know if it's going to be last six months, a year. Um, and to me, I was like, well, yeah, but you know, I lived the first time in 2008. And so I was like, back then. I think I was young and if I would have had the, the same mindset where I'm like, well, regardless, people still have to do business. You know, I just have to maybe work a little bit harder. Um, I probably would have been fine, but you know, I, I didn't think that way. Now um, I'm like, well, maybe I just gotta, you know, regardless, people are going to buy or sell real estate. So who are they going to think of? And so I just kept doing what I was doing. And um, I think since last year, what I've been doing, it kind of set me up for, for this. Cause um, I look at the um, the same thing like the restaurants that were that had those systems in place like Uber Eats, um, what was it, um, Grubhub, where yeah. if 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 they had those systems, they were still be, being able to be open and serve the communities. And if anything, they got even more busier and they grew, which other people um, because they had that system already. And some people that didn't have those systems and it was all just dying in. Well, you know, they 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 couldn't open up. You know what? Um, I, I want some. I, I want everyone to hear what you said. Is is you, you had established a business, and when a crisis showed up, um, you continued to run your playbook. And and it's interesting. Um, I didn't know you were going to say that, uh, but later in our call, we're going to look at an example uh, completely outside of real estate. And um, as I, as I was listening to an interview, it's actually in the in in the space um, industry. As I was listening to an in interview around crisis, um, this this expression was said. Uh, the the person that was giving the interview that worked for NASA said this: "There's no such thing as a crisis playbook. You have to double down on who you already are and what you already know." And um, interestingly enough, that's what you did. You, you were successful in your first year in real estate. And, and let's be honest, that was a great year for, for real estate in general. So it could easily be said, well, you know, congratulations, you entered at the right time, you're a lucky man. And yet that wasn't what your business was built off of. It was built off of hard work. And we're gonna talk about that in just a minute. And so when the crisis showed up, instead of pulling back, um, you said, well, I know who I am. I know what we do, we're gonna double down. Fair? Mm -hmm. Would you agree yeah. with that? Yeah. I think that's an, a valuable lesson. So um, tell us where, 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 does your, where does your business stem from? If you, if you look at um, who your clients are, who are they today? So my clients, a lot of it is um, people that see my stuff on social media. 
So the way okay. I think it started was um, I have a lot of friends where I know a lot of people as well, but you know, I could have called them all and told them, Hey, I'm in real estate. Do you want to buy a house? But then I was like, that's going to take some time and stuff like that. But I just said, you know what, I'm just going to start doing videos. And so then they started seeing me and they started reaching out to me and, you know, it started growing like that organically, but at the same time, then um, they see that I, I help their friends or their pictures and then they want to, you know, work with me as well. Yeah. So let me, let me unpackage the video because some people are scared about video, scared of video. Some people love it. Um, and some people do it well. Uh, some people um, need to stop doing video, uh, but, mm -hmm. uh, but <laughs> no one here. Um, but, but your video, um, there was a purpose to those videos. So, so what are you, when you, when you shoot those videos, what are you doing in those videos? What are you saying in those videos? Maybe not word for word, but what's the, what is your message? Mainly it's just to educate them and let them know what's out there, like uh, what kind of programs there is out there for them to buy a house, what kind of homes are in what areas, what kind of price range they can help. So a lot of the times, you know, um, I think a lot of people were on our phones a lot. And so like, let's just say Facebook and Instagram. And so people just want to see, like I see my kids or different people and they just watch different videos or, you know, if it's a, if it, um, you know, it catches their attention, they're gonna keep looking at it. And so the way I look at it is even though right now, maybe um, the generations, they keep growing. So, you know, as they keep growing, then maybe I'll be able to keep helping them because they've been watching the videos and different things like that. And so that's what I just try and do to give them information and let them know um, whether they wanna buy a home today or tomorrow or in a year um, or even in five years, but they know what, what are the steps to get ready to buy a home, um, and what's out there so kind of so they can know what to compare as well yeah what um what stood out to me as i watched uh some of your videos is you are an educator you know uh you show up and and and, and you did this actually interestingly enough in your last business in precious metals you showed up and said hey let me educate you about the industry that I'm in, when you stepped into the real estate market, you said, I'm going to learn this industry, I'm going to understand it, and then I'm going to communicate to others how to understand the home, right? Many of it, many of your videos are the home buying process. Now, interestingly enough, right, when you look at the, where your business comes from, it matches what your video and content content shows. So the majority of your business right now is, is buyer business, right? Would you agree with that? Yes. And, and what percent, we got a, we got a, a, a question from Gabriel, uh, uh, Gabriela, um, what percentage of your, your business is um, English and what percent is Spanish? Well, a lot of my um, videos are in English and in Spanish. And I would say maybe 25% will like, I would say 90% are Hispanic, but uh, I would say the majority are bilingual and then maybe 25% um, only speaks one language, the first language, which is Spanish, um, which, you know, I'm grateful I can help them and still facilitate them with the process as well. Such a win. Now, here's, here's what I want the, the majority of our agents to hear. Um, that's a niche, right? But, but that niche could be anything. You've created a really big business around being, being bilingual but I could create a really big business around understanding luxury, or I could create a really big business understanding farm and ranch, or I could create a really exactly. big business understanding condos. You just took a niche and educated a niche. So it isn't yeah. about being bilingual. It isn't about serving a certain group. It's about creating that niche that, that you understand that target and you consistently provide value to, to that target. Yeah. I think, and that's very key right there too, because there's a niche and there's plenty of business for everyone. So it's like, and like what, um, how they say, I think in um, bold, what you focus on expands. And so like right now I've been focusing on this, let, let's say. And so I know if, if there was someone or some, somehow you focus on luxury homes and just show that, well, now you're going to attract those buyers or those sellers. And then that's all you're going to do as well, you know? Yeah. It, it, the, the, the key to, to that niche, though, for you has been your ridiculous consistency. Would you agree with that? Yeah, being consistent. Yeah. How else have you how else have you um, garnered business? You 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 told me a story about door knocking. And, and I love 
Um, and actually, it's, it's probably less about door knocking and more about mindset. Talk us through how, how important mindset has been for you in the last, gosh, you've only been in the business 18, 19 months, and you have 53 closed and or 50 something closed and pended for 2020. How important is mindset for you? Um, I think it's very important. Um, it's, you know, you got to, well, at least for myself, I got to keep working on, on myself and, and telling myself that I can do it and pushing myself. Um, like, for example, that, that one time when I was door knocking, I had a couple of flyers, I think maybe 20, and I was just going to take them back to the car and go home because, you know, if someone was paying me hourly, maybe, you know, that's, that's the kind of work I probably would have put into them. Like, oh, well, you know, I'm going to go back home because I'm done. And, and that's I did my job. One, yeah, and that's, and that's, I just did my job. And that's the one thing also I learned, I think when I was um, younger, one of the uh, car salesmen told me one time he said, Edel, he's like, I'll tell you what the um, difference is between commission and working, um, you know, per hour. He's like, if you work hard enough, he's like, I'll write the check for whatever you want on commission. And then if you, um, what is it work? per hour, he's like, you work hard and, you know, I just give you a pat on the back and you did a good job, you know? And so then that's why I was, I'm like, well, you know, it makes sense if I work hard and, you know, I try hard, you know, I, you can reach as much as you want or, you know, and it's going to show on, on your work and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, let's go back to, to, to video. Um, and, and I think, gosh, well, how do I get started? Um, how do I, well, how did you get started? Now, now your videos look, I mean, you, your videos look great. And because that is something you've keyed on, keyed in on as a, as a, as a pillar of your success, but how did it start? Did they look as um, good as they do now? No, uh, I just would get my, you know, iPhone and I would go on live and I would just do live videos that, you know, Hey guys, I'm at this open house and I'm going to be from this hour to this hour. Um, and you know, also if you guys haven't, um, got pre-approved, that's the first thing you have to do. So, and, you know, telling them also what programs are out there and stuff and, and, and just talking about, um, different things that are out there to be able to help people to buy a home and then talk about the home and things like that. So it was mainly just going live and talking to people. Um, and then the other thing that I would do is I would have posted and people would comment or like it, but, you know, I wasn't always looking at my videos because. Sometimes I think we're, well, at least for myself, we'll be self-conscious. And so I'd be like, oh, so I don't, I just put it out there. And after so many videos, you know, sometimes I don't, I forget, you know, what I said in which video, except for people or comment or give it a like and things like that. Yeah. I think what, what an, another takeaway, because I'm always, uh, you know, as my, my, my goal in, in, in interviewing you and my goal in having any conversation with an agent is to look for certain um, repeatable repeatable things that, that I can have the same success, right? I look at you and there's lots of people on our network that says, gosh, that I, I would love to have the business that you have. So what did you do? Um, you created an audience, but you also found an audience, um, right? T tell us about that. You, you joined a Facebook group that was in existence, yes? And then created yeah. an audience within that group. How did you go about doing that? Yeah, so there was a group that I was that I'm part of that's got a uh, fifty thousand members, and it's um, a Facebook group. So where they buy and sell and different things, and um, so people would put on there or they would go live there. I would see different, you know, it's interesting. I would see different uh, a car salesman guy, and he would go live, walk around his dealership, and talk about the cars and things like that. And you know, he would get a lot of engagement. People would say, "Hey, how much?" or things like that, and so. Um, to me, I'm like, hey, well, why can't I do this with houses? So I started going live with the homes, showing them what's out there, you know, showing them this is a really good deal. Um, and so people would just start engaging me, and then I would um, tell them to like my page, and so uh, my business page. And so then I just started after um, I didn't have enough time because I started getting busy. We just started focusing only on the, um, my business page and building that um, versus building that in the group. Yeah. And you opened your door to an audience by, by connecting with an audience that was already built. Sometimes, yeah. right, we think, we think we have to do it ourselves. We think that, well, gosh, I, I don't have anybody in my audience. Why do I, how do I start? And, and the fact is, is you looked at a group that was engaging. You looked at a group on Facebook that, that had plenty of members that you thought, well, what value can I bring this group? 
And interestingly enough, by doing that, you began to create your own following. And then was it, you were able to launch your own group, if you will, your business group or your business page off of that. Yeah. And, and that's, and that's, that's win. yeah. And I think that's very like, um, you know, I've talked to different people and I tell them, you know, it's, you can do the same thing. Um, cause there's, you know, not everyone's going to want to do business with me, let's just say, but not everyone's going to want to do business with you, but let's just say that there's business for everyone, you know, and different people are going to attract different people. And so the way I was, uh, um, I was telling um, one of the people in our office, I was like, you, there's a different Facebook group pages. Let's just say, if you wanted to get started, as long as you, you're part of one of those groups and you're consistently uploading, you know, um, giving them value of why, you know, as far as real estate, what houses are on the market or, you know, when there's an open house, now you start creating the following because people are like, this guy's consistent or this guy's the real estate guy or the real estate girl or, you know, whatever, because they see it so often and, and so consistent. So then from there, now you can start creating the following as well. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a, a key takeaway for all of us. Um, let me just ask you this question because I, I still... <laughs> If, if we have people on the call like me, I, I think about two people managing 23 current escrows, right? And, and I know you're, you're, you're beginning your search um, for um, some consistent help on the administrative side, and you don't have someone in your office handling your transactions, and right? So, so how are you doing that? Like, really, how are you managing the relationships and the service to that many people right now? So right now we do have help. It's me and my wife. And then we have our transaction coordinator, Michelle. So she okay. helps us now. Um, she, it was me and my wife. There? She's, uh, we just got her last month. I believe it was last month that we just got her okay. because my wife Smart was man. doing it all. Yeah. And my wife was doing it all, but she, you know, she was, she wanted to learn this process and how it all works and stuff. So I let her try it out. And then she's like, you know what? It's a lot of work too. So I said, yeah, it's a lot of work. So, <laughs> you know, let's get some help. And so that's when we got Michelle. So, but, you know, it helped out. So now we were able to take on more transactions and stuff like that. And yeah. and I think the the other thing is, you know, with, with creating, I think the following and the things I've created, I think the value that people, you know, they understand that, you know, we're busy, but they also understand that, you know, we want, we're going to do the best that we can to serve them and help them and make sure that they get well taken care of. One of the one of the things I hope people um, see uh, as they listen to you, Idel, is as as crazy as the the day to day may be, um, you always show up um, calm. You always show up right, and that that calm brings confidence that you have things under control. Right, that calm brings um, confidence that uh, that you can get them through a difficult transaction. I think that's important because many of us are, 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 that's not our natural inclination. Many of us like energy, many, I mean, you have incredible energy by the way, but, but you show up just, just cool and calm and, and, and it allows me to believe as a client that you're going to get me through this transaction. You're going to take me through that process. Many of, by the way, many of your clients, first time, right? First time buying a home, first time going through that transaction. And that's been a, a great, probably, um, segment of the population for you to work with, with your personality. Yeah. Yeah. No. And it's, um, you know, I think, um, reading and listening to different books and stuff like that. It's like, I know I have like, let's say different situations going on with different clients and stuff like that, but, you know, when I'm there in front of the client, I got to be there in front of the client and show them that, you know, we're going to take care of them and things like that. Um, and then now when I'm outside of the client, well, I got to get um, my business done, you know, so I got to make the calls and do what I need to do. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much. I'm going to recap, you know, um, okay. my biggest takeaways from my conversation with you is, is first and foremost, come from a place of content, content creation, right? If you continue to build content and, and deliver valuable content and education, people will come back to you. Whether they, the, the beauty is whether they use you or not, you're providing a service to our industry and, and buyers and sellers in your community. Number one, Correct. You, you have never been afraid of hard work ever in your career. And I think that's, it's admirable and, and we can all take a lesson. So hard work is, is absolutely there. 
Um, I also take away the lesson that you were willing to put yourself out there when it wasn't perfect. Your, vi your early videos, and, and I watched a couple of those too, they were not perfect, right? There were some bumps uh, and, and you, just, you just got it done. You put yourself out there. Do not wait for perfection. Now, fast forward, you got better and better and better. And guess what? You sold some homes and could afford a more produced video and, and you built a relationship with a videographer and that, See, some of us will see that and say, well, okay, well, when I can have that, then I'll do that. And, and you didn't do that. It was sequential for you. And I think that's an incredibly valuable lesson as well. Um, and, and, then, and then build it strategically. What I, what I do love is you run a very profitable business and that's because you, you've held on to sales, right? Between you and your wife. And now, right, it, it wasn't until you have 20 something pending and all of a sudden it's like, okay, well, in order to continue the service level that my wife and I are giving, now it's time to build out that operations and administrative team. You're building it according to MREA. It is our model. It's KW's way. And, and you're, you're going to have a phenomenal career in this business and, and a great lesson for all of us to watch and follow. Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, you are welcome. My, my one ask is um, uh, as, as we hop on uh, to our next interview, if you could go into the chat box and make sure that everybody has your email and phone number uh, so that we can refer you business in the Salem market, I would love that. Okay, sounds great. Cool. All right, thank you. Awesome, my friend, thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right. All right. Um, impressive, impressive young man, guys, um, and, and someone to watch within the industry and, and uh, learn from. So, uh, so let's, let's switch gears. Let's go from a, a young man to an old, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, Jesse, <laughs> Jesse, are you, uh, there you go. Young man. You're a young man as well. Um, we're, so we're, we're going to go from someone that uh, is new in the industry. And, and Jesse, why don't you tell us a little bit about, um, about your path? We're going to have a slightly different conversation um, uh, because, uh, you know, everybody here knows that I respect your, your business and you've built a phenomenal business. But um, I, I perhaps even more so um, respect um, your approach to business and the purpose of business. So we're going to have a, a, a broader conversation around that. But tell us a little bit about time in the business, how you, how you ended up in real estate, and what your business looks like right now. Yeah, um, I was actually an electrician uh, working at Intel Corporation before I got into the business. And I bought my first house at 21 years old and uh, was uh, fixed that up, live into, lived into it for a couple of years and then sold it. And then I was like, I kind of like this. So I went to my realtor who owned an, a brokerage and uh, joined his office and worked there for 10 years. Uh, during that time, um, learned a lot, uh, then moved over to KW, uh, been at KW for five. And um, I had a couple of key things that really changed the traje trajectory of my life and my focus. Um, and uh, the one was in 2000 and, uh, 2008, I, uh, when the market crashed, I was a new agent, been in the business for a couple of years. I fell 25 feet out of a tree, life flighted to OHSU, and went through a four month recovery uh, and almost uh, lost my house, uh, had to moved to our rental house and kind of start over taking about $70,000 worth of debt with us. And then the next one fast forward to 2016 was when my brother-in-law passed away, Ryan Patrick Couts, who died from a rock climbing accident. He was 27 years old, just full of life. So those two incidents really have woken me up to like, all right, I need to stay focused on the direction and um, and and um, really make sure that I'm living a life worth worth leaving and and, and enjoying. I'm going to come back to that um, actually right away. Just uh, as as frame of reference, um, you uh, you have a what is your what does your real estate team look like? So yeah, so my real estate team uh, we're you know not a big team. There's four of us total. I have three agents. I, I run a uh, more of a hybrid model, which which means our agents can work with both buyers and sellers. Uh, my goal is to help them be the best uh, agent uh, as they can on their own and work the transaction from start to finish. Um, I have a part time virtual uh, listing coordinator, transaction coordinator, same person. Uh, and that does that virtually. And then I have an online manager that helps with command and some of the systems and, and all of those things. And then myself, I, I do still take listings. 
Um, I am, you know, coach them and help them grow their businesses. I do some marketing still. Uh, and uh, really m my focus is, like I said, just helping them get to a level where they're on their own and provide so much value that they can grow and continue to grow within my business, which also creates the leverage for me to be able to live my life to the fullest and also create a model for them when they get to a certain level. So, so let's go back then, um, because you shared two life events that perhaps um, maybe didn't change your perspective because that probably was your perspective, but maybe changed your activities or changed your focus. Um, how did, how did, what changed? What changed for you in, in the way you looked at your business or the way that you, you looked at the, the next phases of your life? Yeah. What changed really was I, I didn't necessarily, I knew that I, I wanted really time. Time was the, the biggest thing to be able to have those experiences. I didn't, I knew that um, I wanted experiences and opportunities for myself, my family and those around me, but I didn't really have that. I couldn't say those words. Um, but um, so I, I was focused on the wrong, wrong thing. And potentially I think it's, um, there's a book, I think it's um, the um, compound effect where, you know, if you're off one degree and you're flying from, from uh, uh, California to New York, you, you'll end up in Florida. So if you're off just one degree in your focus, you could in a completely different place. So my thought was, if I make a lot of money, if I, if I produce a lot of, uh, of, of income and transaction and production, then I'm gonna get there, everything else will kind of fall into place. And I was focusing on the wrong thing. Um, and it, that when I went through those, those steps and it, it didn't take, it, the, the first one was a wake up call uh, for my life and just being careful and really enjoying my family. The second one was really like living life. It's, it's time now, you know, live life to its fullest and do those things intentionally and, and keep myself accountable to make sure those things get done, not just talk about it. Um, so that, that's really kind of the path there. So, um, so what did you change, Jesse? So I changed um, really, my the whole model of of my team and the, and and my activities um my my team now it's it's you know i've i have agents that grow their business they're incredible they support my my vision and mission and uh they're able to do the things on their own uh and and work it work work those transactions that creates leverage so that was a big change um and I, and I changed just the activities that I do every day to focus on the direction that I'm trying to go um, and that I'm going uh, and make sure I'm, I'm not uh, going the wrong direction. So what does your schedule look like then? Schedule is extremely intentional. So I work Monday through Friday, Monday through Friday. I don't work the weekends. And I take um, about two months, sometimes a little bit more off a year. So the, it has to be super ultra focused on, on my mission. So those activities are, are getting business for myself and the team. Uh, so it's lead generation with my database and it's really spending time with my team members to make sure that they have what they need and um, that they're growing so that they can continue to uh, take on more. Yeah. One of the things uh, and one of the reasons why I wanted to, um, to have have you on, Jesse, is is because our, our network is is named after this mission of making sure that our agents are building businesses that allow them to have experiences that um, that are outside of work, right? Like we work for the experiences that we we provide our families and, and that we have with with loved ones. And you're a great great example of that. Um, talk to us about. Um, Interestingly enough, there's a comment uh, that got sent to just panelists by accident, but it, it says the background and your shirt match. That's cute. Um, and it is, Jesse, uh, perfect word. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you're, what, what you're, where you're headed as, you know, in, in the next couple of days. Oh, yeah, in the next couple of days. So we're, we had a big trip planned. Don't tell our kids. We, we had it planned that we were going to uh, London and England and doing a road trip around there. 
uh, obviously can't do that. So we are touring Oregon for, for the next two weeks on, on Friday. So I've got the motor home ready to go, um, you know, camper ready to go. Uh, so really it's getting out there and just being with them, shut, being able to shut down and enjoy. We, um, you know, the, the goal is, is time, right? It's, it's, it's to be able to have the time to, to go have those experiences. Um, you know, we, we enjoy camping, enjoy road trips, hiking outdoors. Uh, we're in the process of purchasing a beach property um, that's close to walk to a lake and, and walk to the beach. Uh, it's bare land and we're gonna, we're gonna do something cool with that. Uh, and then in 2017, we purchased a 12 acre, 12 acre island on the Clackamas River recreational property to enjoy and be outdoors with our family. Um, so that's important, but, but really the focus is, you know, my team, but also like, how am I gonna, how am I going to have the financial freedom to be able to continue to do this and continue to uh, live that life to its fullest. And it's, and it's, it's growing my team, growing the individuals, which creates leverage. It's um, continuing to buy rental properties. So we just started doing that as well, being very intentional with that. Flipping, we're, we're doing uh, some flips and uh, just cre creating that passive income. Yeah, uh, I think the, the message that I thought was uh, really important for, for our agents to hear, Jesse, is that, um, while we're building big businesses, it's, it's critically important to make sure we know why we're building the big business and that the business just doesn't continue to grow in size without real purpose. Um, there is, um, there's something uh, in, incredibly um, grounding uh, when, when, when we have this conversation and, and you can share that, you know, your big why is experiences and opportunities for you, your family, and those that you love, right? I, I, you, you've shared that openly that, hey, your big why is experiences and opportunities for yourself, your family, and those you love. And that the business then serves the big why. The, the why isn't the actual business, not that you don't love your business, but so it, you reflect that in your time and your schedule. You reflect that in the activities that you do outside of work, right? Your, your camping, your road trips, and your hiking. And actually take money from the business and force yourself, right, to, I, I say force, force, but it's, it's not force, but, but, but force yourself to, you, 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 bought an, you bought recreational land, right? You can't do anything on that land other than recreate, spend time with the family, it, right on that on that island in the Clackamas River, and 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 you do that though we don't we don't we aren't able to have those experiences unless you start putting that plan in for financial freedom. And you say, okay, well, what's that path to financial freedom? It is the business. It is success in the business that allows you to purchase investment properties and, and purchase rentals and create passive income. And, and the property group, your, your, your real estate business is what leads you to the why of that experiential living. And I think that it's so awesome for us to have examples of that and, and for you to be vocal about that um, and, and share with us that, it really is a, a great model to run a, a solid business with purpose. Mm -hmm. I think that's the key is purpose. And, you know, it's, it's, it's not going to be, it's not always going to be easy. We know that we have turbulence all the time. Success is a direction, not a destination. Having a clear why is the key, right? Have, knowing what your why is, and it will ensure that you're, um, you're going the right direction, you're continuing to, to follow that path. Um, it'll be bumpy. My suggestion is along the way, get a therapist, get a coach and stay on the path. Yeah. Um, you, you shared with me a, a book uh, that you think has been, has been helpful. What, what, what book is that and why? Yeah. So, when I actually, when I was working at Intel Corporation, I was introduced to this book and it was in year 2000 when they started um, doing a bunch of cuts, big cuts. Um, and they were moving people around in departments that, that um, didn't, <clears throat> that, you know, they didn't work in that department. They moved there and said, this is your new assignment. And they were like, what the heck? And a lot of people were leaving. Well, before they made any of those adjustments, they, they gave a book to every one of their employees and it was who moved my cheese. Um, and then they made the announcements. And so, and they said, read the book. It's a quick, it's an elementary quick book. I think it's 
100 pages. If you haven't read it, you need to read it. If you've read it years past, read it again now, um, because it's exactly what we need to do in our businesses right now. And, and the, the, the um, message there is there's two mice that are running through a maze and there's two people that are running through the same maze. And they, they find some cheese at one part of the maze and it's there and it's a big pile of cheese. And they use that to, to survive and live and, and, and it's everything that they need to be able to live their life. And they go down that road and they're continu it's consistent. It's always there, it's always there. And they get to a point where it starts going down, down, down to almost nothing and the, the, the people don't realize it. Um, they just continue to know that they kind of get settled and relaxed and know that that cheese is there and it will always be there. Well, eventually it disappears and the mice just go off and find new cheese, right? And the people get there and they go, who moved the cheese? And mm -hmm. uh, really, um, so they start looking at it and they're contemplating like, where is it? Is it behind the wall? Is it here? So with our businesses, uh, we're, we're entering a time or we're in a time where it's constantly changing. Things are different, right? So uh, you may not, like I heard people, someone said that, you know, I used to get all my business through open houses and I can't do open houses anymore because of the pandemic. Well, we need to figure out what that new thing is for you and you need to focus on that. And I think that that's been a huge thing for us is we did get a lot of business through open houses. So what is that new thing for us? And for us, it was really connecting with our people at a, a deeper level than we ever have our database. Um, it's, it's using social media, which we get a ton of business off social media uh, to do. Uh, we just started a video podcast, which we're, uh, which we're uh, enjoying doing, and we're on our third episode now, uh, which has been great. Um, and, it's, uh, con and also building relationships with agents. Uh, we, we do get a lot of referral business too. Awesome. Jesse, thank you. Thanks for, yeah. thanks for being willing to share. Thanks for being an example of our, our network mission, truly. Uh, you're, you're a standout um, in, in building an awesome business, but building it for the purpose of living an experiential life, which means a lot to me and means a lot to our network. And uh, we appreciate you consistently showing up as a leader and, and being willing to share and in, enjoy your family trip around Oregon and take lots of pictures and tell us where we need to go. Thank you. And thank you for your leadership. It's, it's amazing to have a leader that has that example. And I mean, it's, it's easy to be a part of an organization that leads with that. So thank you. Awesome. My pleasure, Jesse. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, our, our next conversation is actually going to um, lend itself well to uh, a couple things that were shared um, by both Edel and, and by Jesse. Um, on your screen, you'll see a picture. Uh, anyone know what that picture is of? I can't see the chat, so maybe some of you know. But just a couple months ago, um, we celebrated the uh, the fiftieth anniversary of the Apollo thirteen mission. Um, sadly, sadly, most of what we know and what we've learned about that mission we learned in a movie uh, by the same name. And and what we're going to talk about today. Uh, is not going to be uh, perfectly in line with that movie and what we think actually happened. Um, but, but what's interesting, which I found um, remarkable about that crisis, um, as, as, as I researched and read um, quite a bit about it uh, around that 50th anniversary, a lot of information came out, a lot of transcripts were shared uh, between um, the astronauts and uh, mission control. Um, the thing that stood out to me was that during this time of ridiculous crisis, the transcripts show that the astronauts and mission control were incredibly calm. Incredibly calm, right? That's a word that's come up a couple times, right? Edel and Jesse are sort of like the epitome of calm, right? Like the mission, right? The Apollo 13 mission has, has, has become known as a, a successful failure, right? That, that saw, you know, thankfully the, the, the safe return of, of that crew in spite of a catastrophic explosion. Now, there, the, the Saturn V rocket launched on, on April 11th, uh, 1970, right? And um, it came home um, five days later, five days, 22 hours and 54 minutes later. And I will tell you, right, um, there is, if we think we are going through crisis and we feel crisis, and, and we are, 
um, there is probably nothing that we can experience that we're like those five days, 22 hours and 54 minutes for both of those astronauts, as well as mission control. What happened was, um, was obviously the, the oxygen tank um, ruptured, right? And, and that set in motion just a series of, of, of tragic events. Um, now, if you remember in that movie, when that oxygen tank exploded, they depicted everybody like rushing around, running down hallways, stressful voices back and forth. But interestingly enough, that is not what happened in that crisis. The only reason why it showed up that way in the movie is because we as watchers, they, the, 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 the producers of that movie needed us to feel like we were in a situation that was urgent and stressful. And they did a good job, right? If you watch that movie, you felt that. But in real life, the pace and the rate of communication did not even change between mission control and astronauts. Mission control and astronauts. And I think that's an incredibly important lesson for us today. Um, now, here's what happened. Uh, the, the fact was, is one of the biggest issues that they encountered was that when they lost that oxygen tank, then their carbon monoxide levels were going to go up. And they, they had to figure out a way to get those carbon monoxide levels down. And so in the movie, in Apollo 13, right, the engineer came into the conference room and, and dumps a bunch of hardware onto the table with one goal. It was to fit a, a square peg into a round hole. Now, some of us believe that that's our business every day, like figuring out how do we fit this square peg into a round hole. Um, what happened was after that explosion, the three astronauts went into the, the lunar module um, for, for the flight home. But see, that lunar module was only built for two people, and yet there was three right? There was two people that were going to return into the, in that lunar module. And now all of a sudden they needed three people to return home in that lunar module. So what did they have to do? Well, they, they, you could say, well, just, just put in the filter, right? Take the, take the, the filter from, uh, from the other module and put it into the module that they were going to go home in. But here's where the problem showed up. One was literally a square filter and one was a circular filter. So mission control needed to get and figure out a way to build a filter, right? A carbon monoxide or dioxide filter to scrub that air so they can actually live long enough those, those three, three and a half days for their way home. There's a lesson there for us. On your screen, <laughs> you'll see what they had to do. And we'll send this out. So I know it's small, you probably can't read it. Um, but they had to give specific instruction by voice. They weren't even able to send photos, right? So the engineers at home were working on creating and building a filter with the specific materials that they had on, on that lunar module. Like they, they, they couldn't send material up to build this. They had to literally fit a square peg into a round hole. And, and there on your screen is an infographic detailing what the steps were and how Apollo 13 astronauts made that CO2 scrubber work. Guys, there was a series of, of, of crises, crises that snowballed because of that tank. And each of, each of those problems were solved together in a calm way. As, as workplace crises go, <laughs> Apollo 13 ranks up there, doesn't it? but everyone stayed calm. Um, there were some rules that they couldn't change. They couldn't change orbital mechanics. They couldn't change chemistry, but they could figure out things together. And, and I just thought, you know, perhaps this week um, more than any, perhaps this month more than any, it's good for us to keep in mind um, that we are problem solvers, right? We're problem solvers for our buyers, for our sellers. We're problem solvers with co-op agents, right? Stress is high, and 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 I've 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 probably dealt with more, um, uh, well, mediating uh, arguments between you know an agent from that office and this office, not ours, but just but just right problems, and that comes from stress and arguments, which comes from stress, 
And yet Apollo 13 stands out to me as a great lesson. I shared earlier, this was the interview where that statement came that I shared during our conversation with Yael, where they said um, they didn't do anything out of the ordinary, but ultimately ran an old playbook in a very calm way. Right? The engineers got together, they put all the materials on the table that they had, and, and they ran their playbook, guys. There's no such thing as a crisis playbook, right? When, when COVID came and, 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 and when tragedy struck this country, I didn't get to go to a, 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 a shelf, pull out a book and say, okay, running a real estate company in a crisis, right? Running a real estate team in a crisis. No, we, we, we looked at our playbook and we doubled down on who we are. We double down on what we know. Um, in, in crisis, what that mission taught us is, is, is it has to be a natural extension of, of who we are as leaders, who we are as a company. Um, in, in crisis, if there's two words that, that I, I wish you to write down and use moving forward, um, it's consistency and flexibility, right? Consistency and flexibility. And um, in that in that 50th anniversary, there was just so many interviews with, with um, people that were involved um, or that helped or that is, has made a study of what happened. And there were three things that I wanted to share and we're gonna wrap up with these three things. In, in crisis, they said, number one, focus on what you can control. There was a lot in space that they couldn't control. There was a lot that those astronauts could not control. They were in a, in a, in a, in a well, it was a, Craft, but it, their their space that they had was a small of uh, was the size of a small family car. Guys, three men in a car for three days. They had very little control over their surroundings. They focused on what they could control. I I, I encourage um, everybody to maybe this weekend hop online and 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 search for um, audio clips of those conversations. Shockingly calm right? I've dealt with repair addendums that seem to be more stressful to the agents involved this week than, than bringing home a spacecraft, right? Focus on what you can control. Number two, one of the researchers said, write your own story. Don't, don't play the hand you've been dealt, play the hand you want, is what, what they said. Write your own story. And number three, they said everybody at Mission Control had a hypothesis on what the outcome was. Their hypothesis was we are going to get them home. But the problem is if you don't have a hypothesis, then you're not going to know if you're winning or losing. And I think that's an incredible, incredibly valuable business lesson as well. So focus on what you can control, write your own story, have a hypothesis about the outcome. All right, guys, we're at the top of the hour. Um, thank you, Yvelle. Thank you, Jesse. Uh, both incredible examples and, and models within our own network. Um, we, are, we are very fortunate to, to be part of a company that um, continues to, to, to be willing to share, uh, that comes from abundance. That word was typed into that chat box quite a bit. Um, and, uh, and really, the leadership of this network is not is not uh, someone with a title, but the leadership of this network is the agents that are part of it. So thank you all for, for being here. Thanks for showing up. Um, thank you, Leslie, for, for organizing and continuing to bring us just phenomenal network um, uh, master series events and education as well and, and, and really driving uh, the helm of this organization. So thank you as well for your leadership. All right, thanks guys.